Hi everybody! Adam told us last week how do you call a pair of two cans? Four can. And if I had known that joke before, maybe the new plugin would have been called Four Can. But I won't tell you why. Someone else will tell you why. Because I have a new guest today on my channel. So let's say hi Aria. Hi John, thanks for having me. Hello everyone, I'm Aria aka IDDQD Sound and today I want to show you the brand new multiband processor by Tucom Plugins. This is an extremely versatile multiband compressor and envelope shaper all in one plugin. I've been playing with it for about a week, I'm really in love and I hope after this video you will be too. So let's get rocking. In front of me I have a project and this is a remix I'm doing for my buddy Whippich from Turkey. Now typically when you do a remix you get stems from the artist and when I got the stems for this track I had this drum track which contains kick, snare and hi-hats. These are all written onto the same audio file as a single stereo stem so obviously we can't process them separately which makes this track a perfect candidate for some multiband processing action. When you open the plugin you will see four bands here and you can control the crossover between these bands from up here. And as you do, you will see the exact frequency at which the crossover occurs as well. You can also click on the top left icon here for some additional options. You can, for example, make the UI bigger if you want, or what I like to do is set it to free, and that way I can resize it on the fly. So let's make this nice and big for today. Shbloops. You can also go to the display section and change the analyzer speed. In this instance, I want it to be a little faster. And finally from here, you can also change the number of bands that you have. So you can have just a single band, you can have dual band, which is useful for isolating, for example, the slap and the thump of a slap bass performance, or you can go nuts and use all four as I'm about to do. So getting to the bands, the controls are the same across all four. So don't be intimidated by all the knobs you see. Really, it's quite simple. Starting from the top, this button allows you to solo a band or you can solo multiple bands at once. This flip icon will change the order of the compressor and the envelope shaper. On any of the knobs, if you hold option, you can adjust that knob for all available bands. Command and double clicking will set the value of any band to the default position. Shift clicking allows for finer adjustments. So let's just play the track and do some stuff to it, shall we? So the first thing I'm gonna do is try to isolate the sub part of our kick sound. From here, I can start compressing it by bringing down this threshold. Maybe increase the ratio. I'm also hearing that the low end of the kick kind of goes on for a bit too long so I can have the compressor release more slowly or better yet let's just use the envelope shaper and bring down the sustain for this band. Maybe even let's give it a little bit of extra attack. So before the envelope shaping And now with. So now we have a little bit more kind of bite to our low end on this track and less sustain, which will help the bass sit there better once that comes in. Finally, since we are reducing the gain, I can go ahead and compensate for that by adjusting the output gain for this band. Sounds pretty nice to me. Another thing I really like about Tucon's multiband processor is that I can engage mid-side processing for any of the bands. So right now the compressor is working on the entire stereo channel, but I can use this knob to feed it more of the mid-channel for this band, for example. So let's just solo the sub-band. I'm actually gonna bring back the crossover a bit. And that's normal procedure with multiband processing. You adjust a little bit and then go back and fine tune since everything in this plugin kind of affects everything else. Now let's turn off these two. And as you can hopefully hear, there's a lot more sustain and kind of rumble in the subs. And then as I engage the envelope shaper, that sustain is a lot lower, and then a little bit of compression to get it all nice and fat. So let's just move on to band two, adjust the compressor and attack and release times. We're seeing about five dB of gain reduction down here, so let's compensate for that. 
I'm not necessarily trying to completely match my boost to the amount of gain reduction. I'm just giving it a little bit of extra juice basically. And we will definitely need to adjust all of that later. Moving on, I'll solo band three. I'll go hunting for our little snare smack here. Once again, let's give it some extra attack. You can see that it's becoming a lot more kind of brittle and upfront. Of course, it's good not to overdo this, but I like to first kind of identify an area where it's clearly too much and then just dial it back from there. Because much like in stand-up comedy with mixing, it's much easier to see where the line is once you cross it. And then you can dial back and try to stay behind that line. I'm also going to use this knob to spread this band to the sides a bit. Let's add in the second band now. Now this is also catching a bit of the hi-hat, as you can see right here, which is not ideal, but that's always something I can go back to an EQ and solve before it even arrives at the multiband compressor. Otherwise, same deal as before. I'll increase the attack, reduce the release. And since our snare is more dynamic, I'll also give it a little bit of a knee. And that means the compressor will kick in a bit below the threshold, which is perfect for catching quieter hits and compressing those a little as well. Once again, let's do a little boost. Maybe increase the ratio for this to get more reduction. And finally, let's solo this final band. This is where that kind of washy sound of this hi-hat lives, which I think will just kind of clutter up my mix. So bringing the sustain down will help a lot. And actually I'll bring down the attack as well on this one. And since the level on this band is actually pretty constant, I'm not going to apply any compression to it. However, I can still use this output gain to set the overall kind of brightness of my track. So I'm happy with something like this. As you can see, we have our kick isolated on band one. Band two has the lower end of the hi-hat sound as well as the body of our snare. And band three has a little bit of the wash of the hi-hat, but also a lot of the smack from the snare. I'm going to bring it up to here so that it catches this little extra bit of the snare as well. And if you adjust the crossovers, always make sure to adjust your compressor settings once again. These boxes show the maximum gain reduction, so you can always click to reset those when you make a change. Uh, so maybe I can get away with a bit more compression on this. That's about right. Finally, I can hold option and adjust the out gain for everything all at once. So now before the multiband processor, And now with the multiband processor. So it sounds much better to me. Of course, it's a little bit louder and I could hold option and start bringing this down until I match the loudness going into the plugin. But I think overall, if we look at the output signal and compare it to the input signal, we see much more consistent levels. The peaks are much more in control and the body of our sound is more upfront. So to me, that's a win, win, win. And this is nice because later down the line when I'm mixing, if I need a little bit more kick, boom, just turn this band up. If I need a little extra smack on my snare, there it is. If my high end gets too bright, bring it down a little bit like that. All really practical. Let's try a different example. So later in the song, there's like a come down section and I've created this little melody from one of the stems in the song. And it sounds like this. Then I have the same sample playing slower to create kind of a fugue style composition. And even further down the song, I've used the new Rhea time stretch algorithm to create a kind of a pad sound. So all together, they sound like this. And they're all feeding into this track. So again, this is another good use case for our multiband processor because instead of having to EQ and compress each of these tracks individually, I can do a lot of stuff using just a single plugin on their parent track and that'll save me some time, but it also will help kind of glue these parts together. Let's play the first part. We can clearly see lots of activity right around here. 
Second track comes in, it hangs out around here. And then we have this pad coming through down here. Then at the very end, we just have a little bit of extra brightness and the high end of the delay. So let's just get to loosely achieving some general gain reduction for each band. I'm going to actually bring up the brightness of this overall sound a little bit more. And I can control its width, so let's maybe even try to brighten up our mid channel. I may also want to adjust the envelope of our middle two bands. And this is a good candidate to maybe flip the order of the processing units because we need the compressor to kind of shape our transients a bit. And then the transient shaper will work much better. Overall, if the transient and the body of your sound aren't much different in terms of loudness, then the unit will struggle to isolate them. So if you're using a compressor to get the sustain more in control, maybe put the envelope shaper after, and that'll give you a lot more versatility. And as per usual, I'm gonna compensate for the gain reduction at the very end. So once again before, And now after. Sounds pretty good to me. A lot more detail is coming through. And let's go through one last example. And this time I just want to use a little bit of multiband compression on my master track. Now, some people think that master track effects are just part of mastering. I personally consider it part of the mix to try and glue all my parts together better. That is my job as the mixer, not necessarily the mastering engineer. I'm obviously not going to put a limiter on there, but anything you can do to kind of get closer to how you like your mix to sound is totally kosher. That said, when it comes to the master track, you got to be a lot more subtle or you will be creating really significant changes to your entire sound, which may mean you'd have to go back and adjust stuff, and then you kind of get stuck in this mixing loop, right? So the aim here is just to make a lot of small changes that together will amount to a big improvement. The procedure otherwise remains the same. Start by deciding on crossovers. I'll try to control our bass fundamental and the kick together using the first band. I'm also going to fully monomize this, focusing my low end to the center. Now, if your mix is very dynamic, you will find that the compressor may over compress some parts and then not compress other parts enough. One quick way of evening out the amount of compression in a very dynamic piece is to have a high knee value. So that way your loudest parts will trigger the compressor more, while the quieter bits will still trigger the compressor, but just less of it. So holding option, I'll bring up the knee for all my bands. This next bit I'm going to do as fast as I can, just bringing down the threshold for all these bands until I see a moderate amount of compression. Maybe around 4 or 5 dB is fine. And now I'm just gonna adjust my crossovers one last time. And it's important as you do this, not to just focus on one part of your song. Do a couple of passes and adjust as you go. And once you're happy with those settings, just start bringing up the gain. Once again, we're trying to simultaneously tame the peaks while bringing the overall RMS up. And so if you look here, we can see that our peak levels actually went down. So the incoming peak level is at 3.9 while we're getting our peaks at 4.1. But of course, the overall sound is much, much fatter and a lot more detail is kind of coming through from every element in my mix. So that's going to be it. So that's going to be it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks again to John for creating all these awesome free plugins for the entire Reaper community. And if you want to get into more of the customizing side of Reaper and learn a bit about SWS and custom scripts and cycle actions and all those kind of nerdy things, make sure to check out my channel. I got a lot of fun stuff in that realm there for you with more coming every week. Take care of yourselves and I hope to see you soon. Bye.